Welcome to Inside New Albany Football with Coach Cody Stubblefield. I'm Jody Walls. I'm Brady Brock. We're with Gumtree Mortgage here in New Albany over on Starlin Avenue. We specialize in home financing needs, whether it's a purchase, a refinance, or a new construction. And we're super passionate about trying to help you find the home of your dreams, help you get it financed, just like this one right here. Go dogs. Go dogs. First play, we're going to be fine. We're back this week with another Tallahatchie Nutrition Player of the Week. Drew, we appreciate everything you guys do for us. This, this week's Player of the Week, well, we've got two guys. One, one is Jaden Hicks. Jaden had 10 tackles, three tackles for a loss and a sack. And then DJ Robinson's back for his second appearance. He had three touchdowns again, one defensive touchdown, pick six, a rushing touchdown, and a, and a passing or, or receiving touchdown. I'm sorry. He also, to go along with that, had uh, seven tackles as well. So, player will get uh, – Two player of the weeks. We're excited for both these guys. Congratulations, fellas. And you already know this, but uh, the good thing about winning player of the week is you get invited to a steak dinner at the end of the year. So You like steak? You like steak? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so appreciate Tallahatch Nutrition and everything those guys do for us. Thank you, guys. I'd like to welcome you today to Inside New Albany Football. I'm Paul Henry with David Goo. Um, brought to you by? Gumtree Mortgage, uh, Brady Brock, Jody Walls. Also, Pam Brown, State Farm, uh, both those two businesses do a tremendous job supporting us each year. Well, Coach Stubblefield, hey, we, we rolled down Highway 15 and came home with a W Friday night, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, you know, anytime you go to Pontiac, you play in the hollow, you know it's going to be a tough game. Uh, guys played well, did exactly what they needed to do to get a win, uh, and, and came out of there with a the win. So anytime you go to Pontiac and come away with a win, we're excited about it. Kind of the first drive of the game kind of started everything for you guys. Uh, got a fourth down about their 20-yard line had a penalty and backed it up. And then uh, on uh, the, the fourth down play from there, uh, we throw a 24 yard touchdown pass to uh, Shaw. So yeah. it kind of set the tone early there with uh, going for on fourth down. Yeah, well, you got that kind of mid range. Didn't really, really too long for a field goal, not really long enough for a punt, you know? Uh, so we decided to go for it. Uh, Braden has done a really good job all year of extending plays, right? Where he's moving in the pocket, uh, extending the play. And then Shaw did a good job continuing the route, finding some open space. And Braden, in that transition and moving around in the pocket, was able to keep his eyes downfield and find him. Uh, and so what you know, what that extension of the play led to six points. So he did a tremendous job right there on that particular play. Yeah, a little bit later on in, in the, the second drive for the Bulldogs, we got the ball in the second quarter with six minutes, 51 seconds left to go. We had another fourth down play. Uh, Simpson uh, went up the middle for about 25 yards on that fourth down play as well. So. Yeah, you know, and that was a play where we tried to do a little tempo right there. We ran a third down play, uh, elected to throw it out there to the, into the flat. Uh, Warned it, thought we could run the ball for the first down. I uh, did it quick, line keeling up. Anytime we've got, you know, Keelan is a hard runner. We're pretty good up front. Uh, we like our chances there. So, um, you know, we're very fortunate for us to do a good job right there, the offensive line to get a hat on the hat and Keelan to pick up the first down. You know, anytime we keep the ball, uh, it's a good thing for the Bulldogs. Go ahead. Well, I thought inside the trenches, you know, our guys were working hard, really kind of setting the, the tone of the game, the whole, yeah. the whole ball game from start to finish. Well, we, you know, offensively, we were always going to try to run the football. You know, we've got a good back, whether it's Keelan Simpson, DJ Robinson, you saw him some too. Uh, those guys did a tremendous job. The offensive line played well. And then on the other side of that, our defense line. Defense line played extremely well. Uh, anytime you control the line of scrimmage, and I think we talked about there in the game, uh, you know, just controlling that line of scrimmage week in and week out, uh, you know, has a huge impact on how the game's going to turn out. We get the ball about two minutes and 20 seconds to go before halftime. Uh, I know you were wanting to put point, points on the board there. First down play, Simpson gets 10 yards. Second play, we had a penalty, illegal procedure, kind of brought it back. And then the third play is a 72-yard touchdown by D.J. Robinson. So awesome, yeah, awesome he, series of, for the Bulldogs. Absolutely. We, we ran what, a play that we've been running. Uh, you know, where we've got Shaw running up the middle of uh, the safety that time went with Shaw. DJ did a tremendous job converting a corner route and pushing it more vertical. Nobody was around him. Braden did a good job extending the play again, keeping his eyes downfield, found DJ. That's something that both receivers, all of our receivers, have done a good job doing. Like I said, I think one of Braden's strengths is moving in the pocket, moving outside the pocket, keeping plays going. Uh, I think, you know, 
he's going to be a guy that in the in the future he's going to start running the ball more for us. Uh, but he's done a tremendous job keeping his eyes downfield, finding those receivers. Uh, other opportunities later in the game too, yeah. we just didn't quite uh, complete, but we're similar situations. So, um, you know, I think you know, talked about the penalty right there. We overcame it. Mm-hmm. That was one of the things that we've got to do a better job cleaning up some of those things. Uh, I think if we had done that, the scoreboard would have been you know even more in our favor. Uh, I think offensively we played really well when we stopped it, but when we were stopped, a lot of it was based off penalties and stopping ourselves. So that's something we got to clean up. You know, I still don't think we're playing our best football. I think we've got another level to go up, um, and I think our guys are going to do that moving forward. Well, you want to be playing your best football when you're rolling the division, yeah. you know? Absolutely. So, like like I said, I mean, offensively there, some huge drives. That that was a very big play overcoming mm-hmm. those two fourth down plays. Um, you know, limit the penalties, and we wouldn't have to done that quite as much. But credit DJ. Credit uh, Braden made a, made a good play on that play. Yeah, he mentioned DJ. I've, I've got him with three touchdowns on the night. Uh, one run, one pass, 95-yard interception return for a touchdown. Gives him seven touchdowns on the year. One rush, one to four receptions, an interception, and a scoop and a score. So is there any other way we can get uh, DJ? Uh, you know, I think <laughs> DJ DJ's been his athlete number one. I think the big stat right there is those two defensive touchdowns. Right. Those are huge uh, momentum shifts. Uh they were driving the field, had put a good drive together. Um, we're trying to get a stop, and DJ made that pick six. That was a huge play right. in the game, maybe the play of the game right, right. there, uh, probably as far as uh, just kind of changing the tide, keeping us going, um, and, and really kind of put the nail in there and it basically uh, put Pontefact behind uh, behind the score. So well, I know our, our fans, it was like electricity was coming from the stands whenever DJ picked that ball and came back across, you know, and came yeah. up the sideline there on, uh, our, on and, our side. And number seven, well, he's a tremendous athlete, right? He's a freshman. He's a young guy, but he did a good job. You know, we, we basically, he was a boot pass. He rolled out of the pocket. He had a lot of pressure. Those D-line, those linebackers, uh, you know, were making him rush right there. Uh, and with that rush and DJ stepping in front of the ball, and he put all that together, and it was a huge play for us. I showed Keelan on the night, 18 carries, 117 yards, and two receptions for 19 yards as well. Yeah, you know, Keelan, you know, yard per carry right there was up a little bit from the previous uh, week. You know, that that's always a good thing. Uh, when we're at our best offensively, we're able to run the ball inside the tackle box and we're able to stretch the field side to side with our quick game and screen game and then take shots vertically. So we hit on several, several of our shots, didn't hit on all of them. Uh, you know, Braden's completion percentage was a little bit lower than we'd like for it to be. Um, but, I, but I think in general, if we could take one thing back from Friday night, it wasn't necessarily play in any way, shape, or form or fashion. It was the penalties that we had offensively that I think stopped us and, and you know, kind of held us back from uh, putting more points on the board. I know from execution standpoint, we were getting the ball in the right people's hands, and then we actually had a couple of other opportunities made from drops, whatever, where everybody's where they're supposed to be, and we just didn't quite make the play, right? Yeah, you know, and nobody wants to make those plays more than those kids do, right? right. Uh, you know, they work tremendously hard day in and day out at right practice. Um, you know, and, and someday, sometimes you're, you're not going to be hundred percent, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, talk about here all the time, you know, if you're batting 300, you have three out of 10 in baseball, you're doing really well. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, in football, it's a little different. We need to be a higher percentage than that. Uh, but you know, you, you're not going to make every play. So we focus a lot of the times we tell them, you know, day in and day out, Hey, the most important play is the next play. That play has gone, put it behind us and make the play the next time. So, and, and our guys are doing that. You know, we, we talk about those receivers doing special things uh, week in and week out, and that's what we got to have. we got to have them doing special stuff. Well, I know just, just seeing that, I see potential, right? And we see just how good we can be, right? And I know y'all see it yeah. every day and, and everything. And just this team has a chance to be very special, right? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I thought this was the best, our most complete game we played all year. Like I say, there's a couple of things we can work on to even get it to the next level. But I uh, thought it was the best game we played all year. Yeah, and I, and I agree. Like I said, I think Pontiac's a good team. They've got some young pieces. they got a couple guys out. Um, but we, we did play well. I think uh, from a defensive perspective, there were a couple drives we'd like to have back where we've got to make sure we get in the gap, do a little bit better, better job bringing that guy down. Uh, three was a good running back, and seven was an extremely shifty guy. So, you know, anytime we're not doing what we need to, there's a problem because there's a good player involved on the other team. Right. Uh, and then offensively, our, our big takeaway was we've got to clean some of the penalties up. Uh, we extended our drive for them with a penalty at one point, mm-hmm. and then we also put ourselves behind the sticks. Uh, based off some penalties uh, on offense. So uh, clean some of those things up, uh, be a little bit more greedy on offense. But, yeah, I think for sure it was our, our best best game of the year so far. Yeah, I showed Braden was 7 of 17 with two touchdowns on the season, 44 of 73, 740 yards, 10 touchdowns, and uh, only three interceptions. Yes. 
And, you know, the, the, the stat that we look at a lot is that completion percentage. You know, if we're throwing the ball a lot, we want to be over 60%. So he's done very close to that most of the games. This week was a little bit lower than that. Um, you know, but a lot of that has to do with, you know, the other team, right, and some of the different things, um, you know, whether it's drop balls or whatever. Um, a lot goes into that particular stat. But it, ideally, we're running the football effectively and we're over 60% completion. Well, I thought. You know, you got to tip hat to our defense. We did a pretty good job against a very athletic Pontotoc yeah. team on that uh, side of the ball, too. Seven, you know, it's going to make a lot of guys miss in his career. He's going to be really athletic. So kind of, you know, honing in on him and making sure uh, we get on him. It was a key part of that game. It's going to be very similar to Senatobi. Senatobi's going to have a really good quarterback that we'll talk about later. Uh, that is a running quarterback that we got to make sure we corral as well. Show the Bulldogs on the season, 141 yards rushing per game, uh, 176 yards passing per game for a total of 317.5 yards per game and averaging 28.75 points a game. Yeah, and I think that goes back to, you know, right now we're probably playing some pretty good defense. I think offensively we're not doing bad, but we want to keep that number up a little bit. Uh, we want to be closer to that 35, you know, per game. Uh, and that's a, that's a lofty goal, right, but it's something we can for sure do. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but with this win against Pontotoc, you tied Bill Ward as the fourth leading uh, winning head coach at New Albany. Well, yeah, I, I know you always you know, keep up with that. You know, it, it's uh, it's something that, you know, we're obviously proud of. Uh, a lot goes into that, right? Kids go into that. Our right. coaching staff, our coaches do a great job week in, and well out, week in and week out developing game plans and putting these kids in great situations. Uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be a part of that. Uh, speaking of the defense, uh, I see that Jeb Bolin is leading the, the team in tackles so with 28. I uh, had seven this past week against uh, Pontotoc. Zion Robinson next in line with 26. McKylan Cameron with 25. And Parker Skinner with 23. And he had seven tackles as well this past week against uh, Pontotoc. You know, a lot of guys right there, you know, a lot of guys coming back. I, I think I continue to say I think our defensive line is kind of that strength of defense, but we're not bad. We're good in a lot of places, right? Um, you know, I think Parker Skinner and Zion Robinson are playing better and better each week. You know, those guys, those are two guys that didn't start the season as those starting inside linebackers. We had a couple of seniors uh, who were injured. Now they've stepped in. They're getting reps. They're getting a lot more practice time each week uh, and doing a really good job for us. You know, uh, watching Zion from his first game where he got kind of thrown into the fire to now, you know, you see a big difference in how he's keying reads and, and things. So he's doing a really good job. Uh, at outside linebacker, we just, we've got speed out there. We talked about DJ Robinson. Um, Earl is the other guy. Those guys are both safeties from last year, right? Mm -hmm. So we pulled our safeties down there outside linebackers. Now we put Shaw and Jeb back there. So there's more speed on the field than there has been years past. I think that's a contributor right there. Um, you know, and then we're doing pretty well at corner as well. So if you look at our defense as a whole, uh, you know, we, we've been very solid. So we're excited about that and we want to continue that. Jaden Hicks, <coughs> excuse me, Jaden. <coughs> Jaden Hicks with 10 tackles this past week. Uh, I think he played with him like a man on a mission this past week. You know, Jaden plays a lot on defense, plays offense as well. Right. Jaden is just, he's flat out one of our best players on the football team. Uh, he does a really good job. And I, I know we talked about DJ earlier, but DJ and Hicks were our players of the game this week. Um, you know, they just, they, Hicks does a tremendous job. Uh, his first two steps are extremely fast. So if you're, a, if you're a tackle, if you're a guard, you better get your hands on him quick because he, he's coming. Um, and just, you know, like I said, he's an all around phenomenal football player for the Bulldogs. His first two steps are quick. He's strong. He gets after it. Uh, he plays with the motor. Uh, can't, can't say enough about Jaden Hicks. On the other hand, uh, Manuel Tucker, he also had six tackles against Pontotoc this past week. You know, the other side, you know, <laughs> like I said, defensive line I think is one of our strengths. You've got Hicks. You've got guys like Tucker. Ethan Connolly came in and played a lot of defensive ends. So they, uh, Tucker and Ethan split time at defensive end. You saw some some guys rolling at nose. You got Jackson Howard has primarily played that nose for us, uh, but you saw some other guys rolling in as well. So, um, you know, I just think we've got some guys. You'll you'll see um, Mr. Wade. You'll see Jalen um, Foster. You saw Ethan Conley. You know, started the game for us. And I think that's something you'll continue to see. Ethan does a really good job. You're going to see Ethan and uh, Emmanuel Tucker kind of swap in and out. And you'll also see some guys go in at nose, but. Uh, Jaden, Jaden's the one guy, he, he doesn't need to come off the field, you know. Um, but they, all of them combined, those six or seven guys that are rolling in on defense, they're doing a good job. And Amen was another big one of those. I noticed uh, one time Parker Skinner went out with a slight injury, came back in a little bit later, but uh, Jaden moved to linebacker. So yeah. I was glad to see him in that position as well. Right, and that's something, you know, that they practice. Jaden can bump back there. We talked just then about the depth that we've got at defensive line. Um, not as deep a linebacker. Jaden can roll back there. 
you'll also see Cade Pittman come in. Cade worked, gives a, a lot of reps in JV games, you know, in practice. Um, but th- those are our two answers at inside linebacker, whether Jade Hicks bumps back or Cade Pittman going to come in at that uh, inside linebacker spot. We mentioned the offense and kind of what they were doing. It's the defense were only averaging giving up 19.5 points per game, which is great. Got four interceptions and three fumble recoveries and nine sacks on the season. Yeah. So, you know, one of the goals that we have, right, and you know, I'm not speaking for Coach Murphy or Coach Robbins, I'm speaking for myself, uh, but we want to be under 17 points. You know, that's two touchdowns and a field goal. Uh, if we do that, we need, from an offense standpoint, we need to win the football game. Um, and then offensively, you know, 35 has always kind of been our, our mark. 30 is phenomenal. We're just shy of that, and we're just over our defensive mark of 17. So there's room for improvement there, but we're playing pretty well. And I, like I said, I think the big takeaway from where we are, we played maybe our best game against Pine Talk Friday night. We're still not where we want to be. We're still greedy. We're still not, you know, not uh, satisfied with where we're at. Uh, I think we can clean some stuff up on both sides of the football uh, and really play our best game. And Friday night would be a great opportunity to do that, for sure. Oh, exactly. No doubt. Well, look, we're going to take it to a break now. Um, I'm Paul Henry with David Goode, Inside Yobney Football with Coach Curtis Elfield. We'll be right back with you in just a moment. It's finally game time. The smell of the fresh-cut grass, the sound of the drums as the band gets ready to perform, and, of course, the roar of the crowd as our hometown New Albany Bulldogs enter the field. Jody Walls and Brady Brock with Gumtree Mortgage here in New Albany remember those days and agree they were some of the best. They also want your mortgage experience to be the best as well. They pride themselves on excellent customer service and establishing a personal connection with their clients. They also have the knowledge and programs to fit your mortgage needs. So whether you're building, buying, or refinancing your current home, they want to help. Call them and set up an appointment today. Jody Walls and Brady Brock with Gumtree Mortgage. Let them help make your dreams come true. Go dogs! I'd like to welcome you back to Inside New Albany Football with Coach Cody Stubblefield. Coach, we're heading to Senatobia this week. Yeah, you know, Senatobia is a very good program. They've got some state championships in their background. Uh, Coach Norris has been there for a while now. Really, really good program, really coached team. Uh, always athletic, right? They've they got some speed out there, and this year is no different, but a tough task for us, but we're excited to, uh, to get to go do it. Uh, we talked about it earlier, another homecoming opportunity for the Bulldogs. We're going to get to have three in a row with our homecoming being next week. Uh, so just excited about another opportunity. A really important game as far as the division. You know, Friday night with Senatopia starts division play. Uh, we want to be playing our best football right there. And I think we're, you know, we're right there at, at that and, uh, and just ready for the opportunity. Senatopia coming off a uh, 44-14 to 14 loss to Winona this past week. Yeah, Winona is a tremendous yeah, 3A team. I good, think they've yeah. got three SEC offers uh, on, on the team. So. Uh, you know, not your typical 3A football team there with Winona, a uh, very talented team. Uh, but they, they did, they definitely got after the Warriors, and, and Senatobia had a tough time with them. You mentioned the state championship. I show Senatobia won one state championship back in 20 or yeah, 2004. Uh, they were 14 and one on the year. The only loss of the year was their second game of the year to Hernando. And they beat West Lauderdale for the 3A state championship, 41 to 21. Yeah, like I said, a lot, a lot of history there. I know our last uh, game against it was in 2008. Um, I can't. I think that was first year here, if I'm not mistaken. It may have been second, um, but a game where we scored late, uh, got up on them, and then they drove the field with I think about a minute or 47 seconds left. Uh, just one that I still have in my mind that you know we we should have came away with the win right there, but. Uh, you know, this is another opportunity, so we're excited about that and uh, definitely going to Senatobia uh, with the expectation of winning the football game. I think last time I saw them play, I think they were playing Columbia down yeah. at Hattiesburg for a state championship, right? right? That was about three years ago, three something years like that, ago. like four. Um, but, uh, but yeah, did a, did a really good job, you know. Uh, like I said, won, won a lot of football games. Uh, they're three and one, four and one this year. They won't get that Winona loss, mm-hmm. uh, was their first loss, so. Uh, I know they, you talked about Hernando. I know they went and played Hernando, beat Hernando, mm-hmm. um, beat Independence, beat some other other football teams that are good programs. Yeah, I show that we've played them ten times. Uh, Bulldogs are three and seven against Senatobia. Yeah, we well, got to get to four. I mean, we got to get to four after Friday night. Uh, certainly want to, you know, take it one, one game at a time, one year at a time. Uh, but we want to be four and eleven after after Friday night against them for sure. Well, what are we going to see offensively from Senatobia? Uh, Senatobia is going to start with their quarterback and running back. Uh, you know, really, that, that's where their speed is at. Uh, quarterback is an extremely shifty. You know, we've played a few of those already. Number seven for Corinth was a, was a guy that had a lot of talent. Number seven for Pontotoc was a fast guy. Number three may be the fastest of the one. You know, those other two were freshmen. This is a junior. 
uh, plays basketball, does track, is a really phenomenal athlete. Uh, we've got to make sure our linebackers and guys know where they're at, know where he's at, uh, whether where they're doing a lot of zone read, uh, where he can give it or keep the ball. Uh, so we just got to have a hat on the hat and make sure everybody's kind of accounted for. A running back is a little more physical, uh, runs the ball effectively, had 200 and something yards uh, in some previous games. Uh, so uh, is a guy that we've got to corral as well. So I think from a defensive standpoint, those are two guys we got to stop. We've got to make sure we contain the quarterback and got to control that line of scrimmage to limit the running back. So okay. So what what number is the running back? The running back's number two. The quarterback's number three. Yeah. Um, and, and like I said, I think that they are the by far the biggest part of their offense. Not the biggest guys in the world. I, I've got one. The quarterback's five eight, 155 pounds, and the running back five seven, 170 pounds. Yeah. But uh, like you say, the the running back seems to be their workhorse on some of the stuff that I've seen. Right. I, I know. I think it was a couple weeks ago. He had 240 yards rushing. I think Pretty three good. TDs. Um, so he, he's a guy that, like I said, they want to get the ball in. They're going to throw the ball some uh, and can throw it effectively. Um, but if we stop the running game and limit those two guys uh, and for rushing yards wise, we're going to be in really good shape. Yeah, I show a couple of wide receivers, number 10, Bobo, and number six, Bobo. <laughs> so, I don't know. Brothers, 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 cousins. I don't know. Yeah, I'm yeah, not I'm sure. Not sure. One's sure. O'Ryan Bobo, one's John Bobo. One's a senior, and I couldn't tell the other one because they had him listed twice. So, yeah. He was a junior and a senior. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe doing both. <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're, they're big classes. They're junior classes for looking at from what, from what we've got written down. Um, got a few key seniors. There are two inside linebackers are seniors um, and, and a DB. But, but a lot of their guys are, are juniors. They've got a really good junior class. What are we kind of expecting out on from the defensive side of the ball, Coach? Well, you know, defensively, they, they're pretty, uh, you know, I would say vanilla. They're not going to change a whole lot up. Uh, they're going to base out of a 3-4 defense, which is what, what we do uh, week in and week out. Um, they, they're going to do try to do their job. They're, they're in cover three or cover two. Uh, the coverage may change a little bit, but that base is going to be that 3-4 defense. Um, you, they will go to a 4-3 uh, with the shell. And I want to talk about shell. I'm talking about the DBs and the corners. Um the box will change to go from three four to four three at times, um, but but their coverage and stuff is very similar. So uh, we we've got to know where they're going to be at at times. Uh, our our offense and our, our quarterback going to uh, be able to see that. And, and there's not going to be a guessing game. You know, Pontotoc rolled a lot of guys down, moved, had a lot of movement. Uh, San Antonio hasn't done that in the past. I think they just want to be really good and really sound at what they do. Um, and so I think at times. You know, whether it's offense or defense, if you put too much into it, you know, you cannot be good at anything. So I think they're trying to hone in and try to be simple but try to be really good. So um, defensively, I think they're led by those two inside linebackers that I talked about. They are seniors, number eight and number 11. They do a really good job for them. Uh, up front, they've got a nose. They've got a 6'3", 280-pound uh, nose guard. It's number 50, probably the best player uh, on that defensive front. So Conley's going to have a good, job, a good task in front of him. Um, and then they're not as strong, I think, as Pontotoc as a whole on the defensive line. Uh, number two and number nine defensive ends for Pontotoc were really, really good. Uh, 24 and 57 are the defensive ends for uh, Senatoga. And while they're good, I don't think they're quite on that level of Pontotoc's defensive ends. So, um, you know, on the back end of that, you've got number 13 and number one. Number one may be their best player in the secondary. Uh, he's a safety that likes to come downhill fast. Um, I probably, if I don't know their stats right off, they're probably one of their leading tacklers because he's all over the place. So um, maybe he's got a couple of interceptions as well. Yeah, see. he's a really good athlete. Number thirteen, the other uh, safety. I know he had a kickoff return from Winona, so we're definitely going to try to avoid kicking him the ball. Um, just you know, he's just got a lot of speed, and if you can uh, limit that, it's something you certainly want to do. Though, um, you know, with that being said, you know, we talk about our kicking game. We didn't talk about it earlier as much. Uh, but we're doing such a good job there. You know, Grayson made a huge kick this past Friday night against Pontotoc. Uh, and, and then De- Demarion Johnson has done a tremendous job punting the ball for us. I mean, anytime we're able to, you know, change or flip that field position, it's huge. And he's done that several times for us. So we're really, really excited about that. Well. He didn't play last year, did he? Johnson's a basketball guy. You know, he's been playing basketball. Uh, done a really good job, a big three-point shooter for the Bulldogs. Uh, you know, talked to me a little bit this summer, a little bit at the end of last year. Just said, so, okay, coach, I think I'd like to come try to punt. Uh, came out and worked hard, did it over the summer. Uh, and it's like, yep, you, you can definitely <laughs> punt and, uh, and can help us. And, you know, uh, he's found his role and has done a really good job helping us. So he, you know, a lot of days he's practicing basketball and then comes and punts and does different things for us. 
Um, but just just doing a really good job for us. Well, I know Kurt on one of our radio broadcasts said, "Hey, we found that's a punter, right? <laughs> you no know doubt." And I mean, he's well, some it, boomers, did he not? It does so well in getting the ball, uh, some height on the ball, give your team the time to get out yeah. and, and settle in to to make a tackle. Or we haven't had very many returned on us this year. Well, well, you, you know, we always want to knock on some wood there, but Ethan has done a tremendous job snapping the ball. Mm-hmm. They're getting back there fast. They're right there. Uh, and then and then D's getting the ball off quick too. I think there were a couple of times against Pontotoc where we didn't block it as well as we needed to have, but because our snap's so good, the kick, the punt so quick, uh, it was still able to get off. And then, like I said, once it's kicked uh, with that hang time, and then Conley, you know, as soon as he snapped the ball, he he's going, and you can't um, hit a punter, a snapper right away. They can block him later, but a lot of teams are leaving him uncovered, uh, and he's getting down the field fast, and some of our other guys and you know really limiting what they can do as far as a return. So that's something we got to keep up. Well, that's one thing people. You don't really think about that, but a lot of times a punter or a kicker, you know that that snapper is probably the uh, most important. Well, I mean, part of that you, you know? got to have that. If it's a slow or snap, or whatever, you know that gives time people time to block. If it's if it's off, then you know you're not going to get a good kick. Uh, so the snapper is extremely important, uh, and Ethan's done a good job of that all year. He's gonna he snaps for uh, you know on field goal, extra point, and, and on the punt. You know another part of that is always important is our holder. You know Jeb does that mm-hmm. a lot. Uh, D, we talked about D being the punter. D. If something happened to Jeb, D does it pretty well, too. So uh, you may at some point see D there doing it. But, uh, yeah, your snapper, your holder, and those specialty guys uh, are critical aspects of every football right. game. Mm-hmm. Well, I know, I know one thing. Cenotopia is kind of known for their speed. You know, they're a big track school. They're yeah. always competing for championships. And I know they're going to probably have a lot of team speed, right? Well, I, I think that's what you're going to see. You know, when you, when you see them, we talked a lot about number three, the quarterback, number two, the running back. And they certainly have speed. On the defensive side, they're going to have it all over the field. You know, um, the defensive line, are, are, it's not that they're slow either, but when you get to the linebacker in that secondary, uh, a lot of team speed. Um, you know, and with, with that, we just, we're just we going to take matchups, find different guys. Uh, you know, we want to do what defensive give us. We know that, we, like we said, well, they're going to be in a 3-4. Um, you know, they're still spacing out there. we got to make sure we do a good job offensively of getting a hat on hat, blocking those guys, but also understanding that space and knowing when to sit down, know when to continue your route, uh, and then Braden know when to find those guys. So, um, you know, game plan is the same. We're gonna, you're going to do a lot of the same stuff. Um, we just got to get a little bit better at it, right? And uh, But, you know, we know they're a good football team. thing is, I think we're a really good football team too. Looking forward to making the trip to San Antonio. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be a, it's gonna be a good one. You want to do a little board talk? I think you talked about that. Uh, I know we've talked a lot about Senatobi's defense. I think you wanted me to get on the board a little bit and show just a few of our, maybe our passive concepts against what they do. Uh, so we'll, we'll do that real quick and uh, kind of give people at home a little bit of an insight to what we do with some of those concepts. That sounds great. All right. Okay, we'll take it to a break at this time. The State Farm Personal Price Plan helps you create an affordable price just for you. Contact local agent Pam Brown for your personal price plan today. Uh, Coach, tell us a little bit about what we're going to be seeing this week from Senatobia. Yeah, I talked earlier about them being in a 3-4 defense. So what we're looking at there is three defensive linemen and four linebackers. You know, that's very similar to what you see with us. You know, these guys, their alignment may be a little bit different, uh, but that's kind of where they'll be. They will be in a cover four look. Uh, corner safety, safety and corner. Um, when that then that can change. So right. So that sometimes whether they're in cover four, they're in cover two. But one of the things I wanted to show some of these guys. You asked about it was some of our triangle read football stuff. So if you if you YouTube football, if you hear the guys talking on Sports Center whatnot, you'll hear triangle read football. So what we're doing is we're reading that triangle right there. You know, from the outside linebacker or your flat defender, which would be this guy right here to your corner and your safety. So we've got several different plays. A couple of them that we do are, are like this right here. So we're going to run a spot route by the outside receiver. A lot of times that's that's Shaw, that's uh, Caleb Shumpert, that's Jeb Bolin. We'll run a corner with our slot receiver, and then we'll flare the back. So the quarterback's looking at a couple different things. Number one, he's going to find this corner right here. If he's down, he's playing a cover two look, which means he's got the flats. All right, we know that we can take the corner route right now because that's a hard route for the safety to cover if he's one on one right there, right? So if he's down. Brain knows right now I've got a shot at the corner route. All right, if he's off, if he's playing some type of cover four, cover three, where he's back, 
Now that route's off. We're no longer going to throw the corner route to the slot. They're taking that away, right? So now he's going to look, he's going to key this outside linebacker. When he finds the outside linebacker, he knows he's got two routes. He's got the running back or the number three, and he's got that guy coming for that spot route, run this. If he hangs in that curl flat area, what's open, Mr. Henry? Throw the guy in the flat. That's right. The flats are vacated now, so we're going to throw that. We're going to get that to our 205 running back or DJ who's really shifty. Uh, we're going to let him run. If this guy is a flat defender, he rolls with the flat. Now we've got to hit that spot route before the outside, the inside linebacker has time to get to the curl flat. So it's just a triangle read. We're, he's got an indicator. He's got a pre-snap read, which is this cornerback. And then he's got a post-snap read, which goes to that outside linebacker right there. And they can change it up to give us different looks. But as long as they're not doing some things, you know, if they don't have everybody covered, one of the things they can do is play a cover uh, three look or a cloud look where he's there, he's there. But again, we like taking our one-on-one matchup with the safety and our slot receiver. So regardless of what they do, we've got some answers. Some teams from time to time will roll this safety over to the middle of the field. Now we're looking backside because you got two on two at that point. So um, just that, that's what you hear. Anytime you hear people talking about trying to read, that is what you're hearing. You know, you can do a bunch of different ways, but you're trying to get to the same spots. So I know this is up there a lot, um, but that that's one concept for us right there. Another concept that you've seen and everybody knows it in football is flood. So now you can have a vertical, a 10 yard out and an arrow route. And you're trying to do the same thing. You're still reading these three guys. And, and that's why they call it triangle read right there. So that's just a couple concepts. One of them snag, one of them's flood that we do week to week. Um, that Braden knows every time he's going to get a pre-snap read, post-snap read, and that tells him where to go with the football. Hey, awesome information here from your head coach, Coach Cody Stubblefield. Thank you. I'd like to welcome you back to Inside and Yomley Football with Coach Cody Stubblefield. Coach, we really appreciate you taking time yeah. to kind of get on the old whiteboard and kind of show us a little bit about what you're talking about. Absolutely. You know, that's something that coaches, Lee, they do. They spend a lot of time in there, whether it's evaluating game film, looking at different things on the board, uh, knowing how you might want to adjust this route or that route. Uh, we do it with the guys. You know, they, they do it. Braden's in there doing that. Every time we meet with receivers, they're on there. They're seeing those things. Um, and, and those are just things you do to give yourself a chance to be successful. Well, I know some people haven't been a coach before. You know, you, sometimes you have people you can tell it to, and some people you have to show it to them. And right, some sure. of them actually take advantage of the film talk, right? Absolutely. So kind of putting all those pieces together can make a tremendous difference in, in kind of that, that football IQ, you would say, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and our guys are the same, right? We, we try to do it a lot of different ways, whether you're walking through it, running through it, on the board, doing film. Uh, you, there's a lot of different ways to teach it, for sure. Well, I can tell you from a, I, I'm a non-football coach, right? It really helps me seeing some of that stuff so I can kind of know and translate what, what coach is talking about on some of this right. stuff, you know? It's, it's a fun aspect of the game. I think that one of the things other than just, you know, getting to be around those young men is actually scheming it up and looking at the film and kind of breaking down what gives you an advantage. So we definitely enjoy that. Well, we're definitely excited to head down to Senatobia this weekend. I know, I know this group's going to travel. Our Bulldog fans are going to come out and support us. Like I said, I can't go back and thank you enough for, like when DJ that pick that pick six, you know, the electricity in the in the stadium the other night from our side was just tremendous, right? And yeah. those kids feed off of that. Yeah, you know, you see it at Ole Miss at Mississippi State at any level, um, you know, when when the, when the stands get loud and those kids can feel that, uh, it's definitely a big boost. So we appreciate all the fans. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna need them Friday night. We're gonna need them the rest of the season. So y'all make sure y'all continue to come out and support these guys. Well, thank you for tuning in to Inside um, New Albany Football with Coach Cody Stubblefield. I'm Paul Henry and David Goode. The show is brought to us by Gumtree Mortgage, Jody Walls, Brady Brock, those two guys. You know, if you got any kind of financial needs, lending-wise, go see those guys. Uh, and then Pam Brown, State Farm, she does a tremendous job. Go see her for any insurance needs as well. Thank you, and go dogs. Here at Pam Brown State Farm, we are so excited to sponsor Inside New Albany Football with Coach Cody Stubblefield. We have served New Albany for a quarter of a century, and we are so proud to continue to serve this wonderful community far into the future. We look forward to a fantastic season for Coach Stubblefield and the Bulldogs. Good luck, and go Dogs! <laughs>